So we're about to dive into a chapter dealing with uh, rational numbers, which includes not only the, the posit all the positives, all the negatives, everything we've dealt with so far, but includes all the numbers between those numbers. Uh, for instance, fractions and decimals. Um, now, before you go freaking out, because I know you all uh, kind of have this thing against these types of numbers, um, they're, they're going to be very easy to deal with if we have a solid understanding of what a fraction and decimal actually are. That's, what we're gonna, that's how we're going to have how we're going to spend our, our time here in this video and our time tomorrow in class. It's really dealing with what a fraction is, what a decimal is. So, first of all, we're going to look at um, how do we convert between these two? How do they relate to one another? For a uh, decimal, if I want to convert it to a fraction, the first thing I have to understand is um, what the word decimal means. Notice there is a there is a prefix there, deci, meaning uh, ten. The, the, because what we have when we count is we have a base 10 counting system. If you notice in the diagram there, uh, we go from tenths to hundredths to thousandths to ten thousandths, so on and so forth. We go past ones, we go ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, so on and so forth that way too. Every time we change our place value, we're changing a power of 10. So if we want to see how a decimal relates to a fraction, uh, if we want to convert these decimals to fractions, well, then there are a couple steps to follow. The first step is simply just to uh, find the place value of the digit furthest to the right. Uh, to do this, we're going to look at an example. We're going to look at the decimal point 0 0.08. If you notice, the 8 is in the hundredths place. So the tenths, hundredths, past the decimal there. So we've identified that. The second step is just take that number and write that as the denominator. That's 100 in the denominator. So this is, um, then the, the next step is to write all the numbers that are to the right of the decimal in the numerator. So this would be 8 one hundredths. Last step, simplify. Now simplifying, uh, if you'll remember, is rewriting this fraction, this ratio. So it's still the same number, but at the same time, it's something we call simplest form, right? Uh, it can't be divided down any any further. Basically, the numerator and the denominator do not have any equal factors, anything that they can both be divided by. So for 8 and 100, uh, their common factor that they the, both these numbers have is 4. Now notice, I'm dividing by the top by 4 and the bottom by 4. If I divide top by 4 and bottom by 4, that's the same thing as dividing by 4 over 4, a.k.a. 1. If I'm dividing by 1, I'm not changing the relationship between the numerator and the denominator. So when I divide this out, I get 2 over 25. Doing another example then, we're going to do uh, 7.25. Notice this is greater than 1, but the 5 is still in the hundredths place. So we'll put 100 in the denominator. Now, I've got a couple options here. The first option is to write everything in the numerator. So that's 725. And now I can do my simplifying, divide top and bottom by 25. 100 divided by 25 is 4. That's pretty easy. Uh, the other one, 725 divided by 25, I could do that. Let's just divide it on a calculator here. And we get 29 fourths which if you convert that to a mixed number is going to give you what? 29 divided by 4 is uh, 7 and then 1 fourth. The other option is to take that and write this as a mixed number. So 7 is going to be my, my whole number there. And then remember a mixed number has a whole number and a fraction. So this is, we still have the 5 is in the hundredths place. So this is still 25 over 100. That's where the sum comes from. And then I just simplify the fraction here. Divide top and bottom by 25, just like I did before, and then this is 7 and 1 fourth. So let's go the other way then. Let's talk about how we take a fraction and make it into this decimal, this base 10 type number. To do that, it's very easy. We're going to divide, we're going to do some long division here. We're going to divide the numerator by the denominator. All right. Remember, the first number, the top number, always goes inside. And you might have heard this called a house before. So 11 ninths is the same thing as 11 divided by 9. The number we're dividing goes inside. The number we're dividing by goes outside. Now what we're doing is we're just dividing here. 9 doesn't go into that first 1, but it does go into 11 one time. So notice we don't have anything above the first one. That's the tens place. In the ones place, we have 11 now. 9 goes into 11 once, and then we multiply. 1 times 9 is 9. Uh, then we're going to subtract 
11 minus 9 is 2. And now, what do we do? Because 9 doesn't go into 2. I have a remainder here, but this is pre-algebra, not second grade, where you had remainders. What we have to recognize is that 11 is not just 11. We have decimal. We have 11.00000, however many zeros we need. So I can add 0, 0.0 from now until the end of time, and I'd still be good. So I can continue here by adding a 0, dropping that down with the 2, and making that 20. And then I continue to just divide by 9, multiply, and subtract. So 20, notice each time, it comes out to 18. So I've got a pattern here. Notice every time I'm repeating 2. So this is, uh, my answer here is 1.2 repeated. If you're going to establish that we're repeating here, I would say at least at least show that the pattern repeats three times here. For my next example, seven seven twentieths. Okay, here we're going to put seven inside the house or whatever you want to call it, and twenty outside, and then we're going to divide. Uh, twenty doesn't go into seven, so I'm going to have to add add point zero. Notice how I put the decimal directly above before I start multiplying before I start dividing because then I won't forget it. Now I'm going to see how many times 20 goes into 70. It goes in three times. Uh, three times 20 is 60, which gives me 10 for a remainder, bring down the zero, and uh, 20 goes into 100 five times. And notice we have a remainder of zero, so we're done. It's 0.35. This is what we call a terminating decimal. All right. One other theme, item for discussion here. Um, we want to uh, we want to talk about how do we compare fractions of decimals. Decimals are pretty easy. Um, we'll look at that tomorrow in class because all we do is we look at the place values, which has a tenths place that is higher, which has a hundredths place. Pretty straightforward. Um, fractions are a little bit more difficult because what you'll notice here, what makes these problems difficult, is that I have my fraction divided into three sectors. Now I know three fourths and two thirds are going to be higher, so let's just deal with those right now. We know three, negative three-fifths, negative seven-eighths, those are going to be my two lower. But if I want to put these in order from least to greatest, um, which is going to come first, two-thirds or three-fourths? Kind of hard to compare because I have my pi or my circle, whatever you want to call it, divided up into unequal amounts. Notice what's going to make this a lot easier. If I take this, okay, if I take this fraction and I divide it into equal sectors, so in other words, if I take my, uh, let's see, let's take my three-fourths and my two-thirds, and let's divide each fraction into equal amounts of sectors. So take three-fourths, and notice I'm dividing each fourth into three different sectors. So notice the three on the two-thirds. I'm going to divide each fourth into three here. Do I have to do that all the way around? Notice I'm going to end up with 12 different sectors here. So three-fourths, then, if I shade in three-fourths of this circle, notice how many of those smaller sectors that now sh shades in. We're looking at nine different sectors. So three-fourths equals nine-twelfths. That's the same thing as if I multiply top and bottom by three. Notice if I multiply the top by three and the bottom by three, that's the same thing as multiplying by one. So I just changed the way my ratio looks a little bit. But now what I have is I have something I can split two-thirds into that could, that could have an equal amount. If I take my two-thirds and I split that, I take each third and split it into, uh, into fourths. So notice each third gets split into fourths. That's going to give me a total of eight sectors shaded in out of 12 total sectors. So notice each circle now is split into 12. So I've got here, notice you might have noticed this uh, as something, you might have called this something else before besides equal sectors. This is common denominators. We're splitting it up into the same amount of stuff. And now it's very easy to see we've got 9 twelfths is bigger than 8 twelfths. So if I'm going least to greatest, I'll write 8 twelfths first followed by 9 twelfths. Which leaves our other two, negative 3 fifths and negative 7 eighths. So I can draw all these pictures out, or what I can do, it would be a lot easier, is if I just figure out what all the common denominators would be here. Notice I'm going to take 8 and multiply it by 5. That's going to give me 40. I'm going to multiply the top by the same amount so that we end up keeping the, the, the ratio or the fraction the same here. Then I'm going to multiply 5 by 8. Notice that will give me a common denominator of 40 here. Multiply the top by 8 as well. 
I get negative 24 fortieths and I get negative 35 fortieths. Careful. Think about which one is bigger here. Negative 24 is bigger than negative 35 because it's closer to zero. So if I write these in order, before the, uh, before the 8 twelfths is going to come uh, this negative 24 fortieths, again, because that's greater. Before that is going to come the negative 35 fortieths. So I've got all these different, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to write the original fractions that I got these ones from. So 35 fortieths, remember it was 7 eighths, negative 24 fortieths was negative 3 fifths, uh, 8 twelfths was 2 thirds, and 9 twelfths was 3 fourths, and now I've got all my fractions in order. I'm able to compare them when I get those common denominators. Uh, now what you need to do you need to hop on the computer there, or hop uh, below this and complete the converting rational numbers assignment. Um, all this is going to ask you to do is to convert fractions to decimals or decimals to fractions. Good luck.